Hi, welcome back to module number 20. This module we look into SDN and NFV, which stand for Software Defined Network and Network Function Virtualization. So let's look into the content. Here we have two chapters, uh, SDN Overview and NFV Overview. So we do not have any demo, but we look into a high level on what's the benefit of using SDN, the motivation of uh, moving to SDN and NFV. So let's start looking into the evolution of computer era. Now on the left hand side here, we have our mainframe. So the mainframe have a dedicated application, dedicated OS and dedicated hardware. All these are proprietary. So mainframe was started uh, many years ago by IBM. So it consists of vertical integration and closed interfaces, small scale industrial application. So it's very specific for scientific usage or for calculation. So all these interfaces as well as the hardware are close so it's locked down to a single vendor so we also call them as proprietary now it's evolved into something today we have the pc compatible so i believe that most of you who are using pc uh, regardless on what brand it can be hp dell renovo so all these are compatible personal computer which can run a lot of apps which is the application so we have a different operating system such as a uh, window linux mac os so these are from different operating system running on similar platform, the microprocessor. The common one will be using x86 or ARM. So from vertical integration, now we go into horizontal integration and open interfaces for large scale application across industry. So no longer just looking into very specific industry. So how this related to our network? All right, so let's look into the next slide here. So let's look into the network industry development implication from the IT industry. So just now I mentioned about how IT evolved. So the transformation of IT industry have triggered the thinking of network industry. So first we have the uh, IT evolving from very close proprietary to open standard. So can we borrow this concept and apply into the network? So the industry has proposed the SDN concept. SDN is stand for software defined network and has made an attempt to put SDN into commercial use aiming to make network more open, flexible, and simple. So this is the motivation. We want to make it more open, easier, and flexible. So let's look into how uh, the uh, evolution from the computing. At the very bottom, we have the universal hardware. We can run on x86 ARM chip. We can run on different type of memory, a hard disk or SSD. Then we can use different type of server, and uh, we have different storage device on PC. Now for the past decade, I believe that you heard about the virtualization where they create an abstraction to abstract the layer of the hardware, regardless what type of hardware you are running, the software thing that they are running on a single platform. That is what the virtualization is about. Then we have our operating system. The famous one will be the Linux as well as the Windows. So example will be uh, Gauss DB, Open Eula, Fusion Sphere. These are from Huawei. Some of them are open standard. So various virtualization technology operating system Middleware. Middleware is a software that bridging between operating system and uh, database, for example. So we call it as a middleware. Then we also have a database to store all this information. Last but not least, we also have this uh, cloud services. Example will be uh, Elastic Compute Services. And we also have the Elastic Volume Service. This is more on the storage service and compute services in the cloud. So the question here is that we have so many innovation in computing industry. Can we do some Thing in the network industry. So that is where the motivation comes. Does the network industry build a hierarchical and open ecosystem according to the computer industry? So they would like to run this hardware that is not dependent on vendor. So they try to make it as open as possible. Then the main brain, it will be using the SDN controller that doesn't tie to any vendor. It can be just like the uh, CPU. They can actually use different vendor CPU easily available. And on top of that, rather than use a configuration on the device, we are going to use program the controller to use the controller to send this control information to the network. So that is the incentive on decouple this proprietary information or proprietary hardware and turn it to become more open. So that's the motivation. 
So let's look into the current situation now. Typical IP network, distributed network. So what is a distributed network? Let's look into this slide. What does it mean here? Before we move on, there are a few terms that you need to understand. In a typical network device, we have three different planes. The first one will be our forwarding plane. The forwarding plane works like this. If I have this packet, coming in, let's say from the interface gig 001, G001, and this packet need to be forward to the egress, and which egress that I'm going to forward, that depends on your control plane. Your control plane will have your forwarding table, protocol and algorithm to determine when you have an ingress packet from one interface, where is the egress packet should forward to. Now this decision is by the control plane. Control plane is where the algorithm and control control make the decision but the forwarding is done on the forwarding plane if you look into huawei we have our lpu our line processing unit the line card so we have the unknown data frame and then we have the forwarding behavior so this is where our OSBF, BGP, all this information are construct in the control plane. But you must have some way to configure it. So that's why we also have another plane we call management plane. For example, you would like to know whether the device is running properly. You would like to use SNMP and you would like to use CLI to configure your control plane. So this is where we have our configuration command. So now you understand that we have three plane, forwarding plane, control plane and management plane. So let's look into the description here. The typical IP network is distributed network with peer-to-peer -peer control. Each network device has independent forwarding, control, and management plane. So for here, you can see I have three routers. So I have here router A, router B, and router C. Each of these devices, they have three different plane. Control plane that we have here, management plane, and the forwarding plane. You notice that? Each of these, they have their own independent control plane. This is currently what happened now. The control plane of a network device exchange packet of routing protocol to generate an in independent data plane to guide the packet. So when the packet is being forwarded from router B, let's say now I'll forward to router A. Router A is going to construct, it can be based on OSPF for example. So based on OSPF, that is our control uh, information. Then they'll forward to the forwarding plane to tell them that how are you going to forward it. So router A will look into the shortest path saying that, hey, when you come in from my interface on the left, I would like to forward into the interface on the right. Each of these, they make their decision independent. The advantage of a typical IP network is that the network device are decouple from protocol device from different vendor are compatible with each other and network convergence is ensured in fault scenario because of the distributor control plane if one of these control plane fail it really doesn't matter because from b i also have another path to go to c instead of going to a for example so that is the main advantages of using a distributor type of a control plane but they also have disadvantage so let's look into what are the disadvantage of a typical IP network in a distributed environment. So these are the problems faced by a typical network based on a traditional distributed network. The first one here is frequent network congestions. Okay, I believe that you know what is the network congestion is where your bandwidth is insufficient to carry the data. Then we have a difficulty to perform operation and management or simply we call O&M. Manage of this device will be a challenge because we have so many independent control plane. So we have a complex network technology because there is a mix of different technology that we are using and for us to deploy the network is really slow. So I want you to remember that these are the typical uh, problem that currently we are facing. Let's look into the frequent network congestions on the detail. In this diagram, we have uh, C, A, and D. We form a triangle. So the network compute forward path based on the bandwidth. The link between C and D is the shortest. So they're referring to here, C and D. The volume of traffic from C and D exceed the bandwidth. As you can see from here, we have a 6 gig, which is the used bandwidth, and the total bandwidth is only 5 gigabit. So 6 gigabit versus 5 gigabit, we still have 1 gigabit of uh, traffic, which is insufficient, causing the packet loss. 
So although other link are idle, which referring to uh, C and A and uh, A and D, you can see that we have uh, 5 G over here, 5 gigabit and 10 gigabit over here, which is idle. But the optimum traffic is actually uh, CAD. C A D, but the algorithm calculate that C and D is the best path. Hence, even they have a congestions that happen, they will still use it because the limitation of the algorithm, the routing protocol algorithm. So, what's the solution then? Well, the solution is to establish what we call a tunnel. Okay, so tunnel are established in sequence. So we have a sequence establishment of a tunnel. So we have a tunnel A E, then we have tunnel A G, tunnel number two, and tunnel number three which is a CH. Let's look into the diagram. So A to E, we are using uh, this path here. A to F, F to G, G to H, and H to E. Then the second tunnel is the A to B, B to C, and C to G. And the third tunnel, C to H, is C to D, D to E, but the tunnel is already established between H and E, hence this tunnel will become uh, failed. So this is a failed tunnel because uh, we do not have enough resources to reserve bandwidth for the tunnel to be formed. The solution for this problem is to use a global path calculation and the uh, optimum tunnel path adjustment. So you can see that the first tunnel is A, F, and G. Second tunnel is A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to E. And the third tunnel is C to G and G to H. So this is where we are using a global path calculation. So this is one of the issues that currently we are facing, which is a frequent network congestions. Let's look into the second issue. Remember, we have four issues. The second issue here is a complex network technology. So many network protocol or network technology experts need to learn many RFC related to network devices. Understanding the RFC take a long time and the number of RFC is still increasing. So in this diagram, you can see over the years, we have so many RFC. So the vendor need to conform to the RFC. So this is a complex RFC. And to make things even more difficult, we need to familiar as an administrator, network administrator, we need to be familiar with the device. And on top of that, we also have many different devices with many vendors. So you need to master tens of thousands of commands. So this become very complex. So that is the second issue that we are facing, the configuration of the device. Third issue that we are facing here is the difficulty in locating and analyze network fault. So firstly, it's difficult for you to identify the fault manually. And even you can identify some of the fault, you still need to check in detail, such as you are using a um, packet capturing or port mirroring. And then you are going to manually look for the problem to do some diagnostic. So traditional operation and maintenance network rely on manual fault identification, location, and diagnostic. More than 85% of the network fault are found only after service complaint. So problem cannot be proactively identified or analyzed. So which means that we rely on user when they face that problem, only then the administrator is going to fix it. Is there a problem that before it occur that the administrator know that there will be a major issue and then they start to rectify it? That will be good, right? So currently we are facing uh, this kind of problem and secondly is the difficulty to locate the fault abnormal flow account for 3.65 percent of all flow on the network it's only 3.65 the network fault that are found upon user complaint are just the tips of the iceberg which means that there are a lot of fault that is undetected so traditional o m only monitor device indicator some indicator are normal but user experience is poor there is no correlated analysis of network and of user and network so according to a data center network statistic, it takes 76 minutes to locate a fault on average. So that is one major issue that currently we are facing, uh, which is difficult in locating the fault. And final problem that we have in a traditional network is slow in network service deployment. So in this diagram, we have our physical network. So we already deploy the physical network. Then on top of the physical network, we are going to place the service on top, such as a virtual network for office, network for scientific, and network for surveillance. And on top of each of these, we may need to configure the access policy, which means type of packet I'm going to 
allow or deny then we have a bandwidth policy qos policy and other policy now all this causes this type of problem low physical network deployment efficiency the physical network does not support a zptp which is a zero touch configuration because we have to configure it line by line although that there are some automation that recently uh, we can see that they start to using zptp already then the second one is a long service deployment you notice in this service new service deployment involve end-to-end -end device configuration it's very slow for us to deploy services such as the um, uh, in this example the office the scientific and the video surveillance and more importantly is the policy especially the security policy so network policy cannot be defined by user policy changes are complex and, and cannot be flexibly adjusted so in all we have this kind of problem so we have a uh, network congestions we have complex network difficulty in locating the fault and finally we also have a slow network services to deploy so what is the solution then all right so the solution for this is what we call the sdn 